Thank you very much. Um, now, I, I have to say, first of all, I am presenting on behalf of John Gallagher, who unfortunately cannot be here today due to being unwell. And this is very much his proposal, and I'm presenting at uh, late notice. So please forgive me, uh, and I hope to do him justice for this proposal. So um, really, the background to this proposal is um, it is a use case. And um, it is really a um, use case using the Dementias Platform UK. Unlike um, most of you here, we are a data repository. We are a platform of over 47 cohorts across over 2 million participants. And um, we are um, very much different, but this is our proposal. So. Um, IHCC is predicated on the value of improved data access, and likewise, so is DPUK. And really, it is about identifying the challenges of improving data access and finding solutions to these challenges. And I think that's what we've heard throughout today. And I know it's been a very long day, and I do have quite a short presentation. I'll try and make this very brief for you. And the proposal, although it's a scientific proposal, it is a proposal to use precision medicine approach to multimorbidity as a use case to identify and quantify governance, practical, and scientific issues that help and hinder collaborative data access. So the proposal is to use the DPUK data portal as a trusted third-party environment enabling transparent consortium-based collaborative research. So the research question, how can an integrated analysis of survey, of survey omics and electronic record data inform disease etiology, disease risk prediction, therapeutic target prioritization, and fundamental biological insight? So triangulation across Data modalities and across data, data sets will be achieved using standard regression and machine learning approaches. Beyond direct scientific interest, findings will be used to identify the strengths and limitations of IHCC data sets and inform the development of IHCC data standards and access policies. The IHCC cohort enrichment program. So a few um, facts about the data uh, portal. We've just uh, submitted a data portal paper to BioArchive. This is available, and this outlines a full details of the actual data portal. So a few facts about it. We have a secure, fully auditable environment. No change occurs in legal status of data once it's uploaded onto the data portal. Not all data is actually uploaded from our cohorts. Some cohorts are part of the data portal, but they choose to keep their data outside of the data portal. No loss of control over data access and use by data controllers takes place. No repeat data transfer is needed when, once you become um, part of the data portal. Data cannot be downloaded. We operate a bring researchers to the data model. Data, however, can be removed on request of the data controller at any time. There is transparent data use for multi-center consortia, and there is two-factor user authentication. We use a mobile authenticator on your mobile phone, and you have a password to log into the data portal. You have remote access to multiple data sets. There's a single point of contact for multiple data sets. You log into the data portal, you have a, po uh, you have a project folder for your, data, for your project, and in there will be your multiple data sets. There are tiered data discovery tools. Data are curated to a common standard. We are busy working our way through our data sets from all our cohorts at the moment, and we are creating a standardized naming structure across the data across our cohorts. This is a 12 to 18 month program and we've completed four cohorts. There are, here uh, researchers are able to log into the data portal and they can uh, conduct confirmatory uh, analyses. Virtual desktops are configurable for standard regression 
multiple uh, and machine learning approaches in situ and federated analyses. And this is the data portal. Here researchers are able to log on and have a look at the, da uh, the um, data portal and realize that they can identify, access and analyze all from one page. If I was much braver, I would actually log in live now, but I've had enough surprises for one week. <laughs> but however, I am here for two days and I can log in on my laptop. So identify, first of all, we have our cohort identification tools. We have the cohort matrix, the cohort directory, and here researchers can find out about data availability. Cohort access, they can apply for data from the data portal. They can go through the um, application process. We have user guides. We have guides on working with big data, for example. And analyze, they can access the analyses environment from here and are developing imaging and genetics platform, which we're busy developing right now. They can access this from this one single page. Firstly, just a couple of screenshots from our um, data discovery tools. This is our cohort matrix. Along the left-hand side, you can see there's a list of um, our various cohorts going down on the left-hand side with some demographic variables. Here, uh, researchers begin their data discovery journey, we call it, where they can see basic demographic variables. They can um, see um, the data access process where they can find out whether they have to um, access um, the cohort directly through the por portal or whether they have to put an application in um, through the um, cohort um, as well as through the data portal. They can also see what type of data sets are available, whether it is the full cohort of data or perhaps there is just home interview and imaging data or whether there is just phases one to five of the data for example. So all the information is available on the data portal for them to see exactly what they can apply for to answer their research question. Likewise, we, they, the researchers can move on to the cohort directory. And here we have an example of ELSA, the English Longitudinal Study of Aging. Now all our data comes to us in various forms. Some of our cohorts give it to us in multiple data sets. ELSA, for example, comes to us in 53 to 58 different data sets in Excel spreadsheets. And what we do is we divide this up into our ontology of 22 top level categories. All data is divided into this, these categories of data. And on the left hand side, you can see these categories are, are uh, positioned here. And researchers will know that th this cohort, for example, has data in these categories. So these are derived by a, by a sample assays. And they know that there's data across those waves and they can apply for, the, um, for ELSA because they know that there, is, there are data in these uh, waves as, um, and these waves across these waves. So we like to inform the researchers so they know exactly which cohorts to apply for. We are also busy launching, by the end of this month, a new tool. And this is our DPUK Cohort Explorer. And what we're going to do is, uh, after we've standardized uh, the variables across our cohorts, we're also going to harmonize a select number of 30 variables across our cohorts. And these key variables will be for data visualization. And these key variables will be across Variables which will be family history, neurological disorders, cognition, BMI, APOE, and researchers will be able to then visualize these in an interactive tool. This has not been launched yet. This is the first time we've actually publicly been able to show this tool, but that's why it's a screenshot. And this is all goes towards helping researchers understand exactly which data is available in the data portal. And this is part of our development program that we're busy undertaking at the moment. So what is the goal of our proposal? Our proposal is to produce a minimal viable product to, to test IHCC cohorts' ability to deliver multi-cohort and multimodal data access. The overview of activities to achieve this goal. Firstly, to establish the consortium. 
to scope IHCC cohorts to establish relevant data sets and the degree of overlap between them. Data types could be focused on survey genetic imaging and linkage data to operate as a collaborative with cohorts and other platforms to standardize approaches to multimodal data to organize and structure and to establish work streams to organize an executive who will coordinate overall activity to establish policy to identify study consent and national policy constraints to develop informatics to identify and establish data standards for each modality and to develop the science to manage and project to manage the project to design and execute and execute a scientific program to answer the research question so our minimum via minimum viable product to identify sufficient data sets to test the research question and this is to test in situ and federated solutions to study specific and national policy data access constraints. Not all data sets will be suitable to answer the research question. We don't need every data set. Using existing solutions to data standards wherever possible. We don't want to reinvent the wheel if there are already existing set data standards in place. A standardi standardize a minimum core data set to a common data model and make this core data set accessible on the data portal to the consortium and clearly define minimal service delivery standards to develop a full audit trail for data access and processing pipeline for the user experience. Our timelines, months one to six, to establish and organize the consortium, define leadership structures and mem member con contributions, and to define the MVP. Months seven to 12, to establish the work streams, the executive, the policy, the informatics, and the science, and to coordinate the analytic strategy for in situ and federated analyses. Months 13 to 24, analyses completed and results are disseminated. Reviewer user experience, review the barriers, the challenges and the successes of the project. Report to IHCC and to make recommendations to funders. Cross cohort needs, the rationale for the cross cohort collaboration. This project is designed to address questions that few cohorts can address independently to identify the challenges of cross cohort collaboration to inform the added scientific value and technical challenges of analyzing multiple independent data sets to list activities that will draw activities from cohorts and resources making cohort data accessible to third party researchers Consortium membership will not necessarily be limited to those contributing to, um, to this project. To develop strategies for analyzing multiple data sets. To identify and establish data standards for different data modalities. This is a need. To identify those cohorts and resources. Cohorts with combinations of data types. This is a need as well to identify, to re record, and to have this in one place. And also to identify those specialist data platforms that can contribute to this project. Resources required. We already have the infrastructure in place. So option one is to use the proposal to inform IHCC on current data access procedures. Option two, to include option one, but also to develop ergonomic data discovery tools above what we already are developing. And option three is to use the proposal to enrich existing cohorts with genotype and sequencing. Thank you. Thank you.